Welcome back, my name is Alex Rodriguez and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to take your transition from looking like this to this. It might be subtle, but there's a few reasons why this second transition is a lot better. First of all, we're matching the color grade when we transition from the first clip to the second clip. Second of all, we're zooming into the clip instead of revealing it through just a normal green screen. And lastly, we're adding some kind of effect at the transition that allows you to feel like you're entering into the scene. All you need for this effect are two shots. The first shot we're gonna use is something with a screen that we can transition into. And then the second clip will be the clip that we reveal. All right, so now that we're in After Effects, we got our two clips in our sequence. We have this first clip where the girl pulls out a Polaroid and the second clip we wanna to transition to, which is these girls splashing in the water. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to come and grab this clip of the girl splashing in the water, drag it back a ways, navigate to that split point, and we're gonna split the layer by doing Command-Shift-D. So now with these layers split, we're going to apply the corner pin effect, and we're gonna drag that onto our clip. And with this, you can actually you can come here and grab these crosshairs. I'm gonna place these corner pins where the picture would actually sit if it was a Polaroid photo. So now that I've done this, I'm going to go ahead and check the stopwatch on all of the corner pins to automate this. And we're gonna go forward 10 frames or so and repeat the process. Now keep in mind that when you're doing special effects, it's always better to do less work than more work. And some of these effects are pretty time intensive. And so I'm skipping forward 10 frames at a time because for some of the areas that don't have as much movement, this might track perfectly and I don't have to add the extra keyframes in between. So I've added a few more keyframes and we can see the effect is starting to look pretty good. The picture that we're transitioning into tracks along with the Polaroid really nicely. I'm gonna go to the beginning of this clip and keyframe the opacity and put it down to zero right at the beginning. And then I'm gonna to move to somewhere towards the end of this transition and set it to 75. So now that we've done this and we run through, we can see that the photo develops just like an actual Polaroid would. So for the zoom effect, we're gonna go ahead and make a new adjustment layer by going to layer, new, adjustment layer, add a transform to this adjustment layer, animate the anchor point, position, scale, and rotation at the beginning of this transition clip. And then we're gonna to go to the frame right before it transitions, and we're gonna save ourselves a ton of time by clicking these cr the crosshair for this anchor point and setting it to the center of this photo. So now with that selected, we can go ahead and increase our scale and increase our rotation. So with our keyframe set, we're gonna play it back and see how it's starting to look. So the end position is right, but the motion that we take to get there is feeling a little awkward. And so we need to go in and mess with our keyframes in order to change the velocity. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go into our adjustment layer. We're going to effects and transform. And for each of these effects, we're gonna select them and choose keyframe assistant and easy ease in. We're gonna go through each one of these keyframes and we're gonna right click on it and click keyframe velocity. We want this to be as gradual of the transition as possible and so we want these, this outgoing velocity to be zero at a weight of around 90%. And so I'm gonna apply this to each of these keyframes. And then for our ending keyframes, we want them to have no influence. We want it to smack right up into it. So we're gonna come in here, and we're, for the incoming velocity, we're gonna say, uh, we're just going to make it a 0% influence. All right, so now we're gonna play that back and see how that feels. And it's looking pretty good. So we're gonna to want to do two things though to change this. We notice that it kind of goes out of frame halfway through. So we can fix that by animating position a little bit in the middle. And so we're going to click our stopwatch for position, we're gonna to go to the middle where it gets a little bit out of frame and we're simply going to drag it back towards the center of the screen. And then we'll go to that last frame and just recenter it. This will just take some tweaking depending on what screen you guys are using for this transition effect. So now if we play it back, we see that we get a smooth transition and it's looking really good. The last thing we wanna do before we're done with this part is we're gonna turn on some motion blur. And so we're going to click uh, this icon that enables the motion blur for all layers. And then we're gonna go to our toggle and switches mode until we see that icon in the bar right here. And we're simply going to click. So now when I play it back, you can see that the zoom effect has some motion blur on it. Motion blur is important because it mimics the way that our human eye sees motion. 
And without this motion blur, action will seem choppy and inorganic. And so this really sells that smooth transition into the next clip. It's looking really good, but there's still something missing. We are going to put in a turbulent displace when we go through that transition, like we're moving through a lens. So we're gonna search up for turbulent displace, and we're gonna keyframe this from an amount of zero all the way to the transition where we make the value 50, and then a little past the clip, we'll bring it back down to zero. Now when we play that back, we get a really good looking clip, we get a slight displacement, and if you guys wanna go ahead, you can tinker with an optical distortion and do the same thing where you keyframe it in and out right before and after the clip to give it that immersive feel. All right, so now let's watch that back in comparison to just the green screen effect. And you can see that the effect we just made really sells that immersive feel as it takes you into the photo. I hope you guys learned something from this tutorial. If you liked what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe for updates on more tutorials that I will be posting in the coming weeks. Bye guys and thanks for watching.